Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, my name is Megan, thank you so much for joining me. So I am just gonna be getting ready for work in this video, pretty much. Um, I realized that the last few tutorials that I did, I did all voiceovers, so I wanted to sort of like get back to talking to you guys while I'm filming videos and hopefully like you guys enjoy that. The lighting is kind of messed up today because the weather cannot decide what it's gonna do, so I apologize in advance if things get dark or if things get too bright, but anyway, I don't want to be late, so I gotta keep moving because I actually am going to work today and I have to drive sort of far, so this should be interesting. One thing that I am gonna do is take this paper towel and cover my shirt with it because <laughs> Um, whenever I wear actual clothes, when I film, I always end up getting makeup on them. I don't know why, like normally I just wear a robe. Anyway, so this is the real me. Like this actually like on my tiny little camera looks like it could be my shirt, but I know that when you guys are watching this, it's gonna be like, what the hell is wrong with her? Anyway, okay, I'm gonna start out with my Temp2 Base Smooth and Matte Primer. Um, this has been cut open for like three days and that's probably like insanely unsanitary. So um, I wouldn't recommend that. I should have like maybe put it in a Ziploc bag or like, and I'm basically like reaching in with my hands. So like this is a sanitation nightmare, don't do this. But I love this primer and I wanna use it and it works really well with my new NARS foundation. So I'm waiting for my new one to come in the mail. So I'm going to be using my NARS foundation. I reviewed this uh, last week, I think, for you guys. This is the color Light 3, Gobi, G-O-B-I. Anyway, it's a little too light. You guys know that too. I just don't really want to go back to Sephora <laughs> and return another thing. So I put this on with my hands at first and really like work it into my skin. That's what they did say to do on the Sephora website. And then I go around with a beauty blender and just sort of like fix it up a little bit. But you can really tell like it's too light for my, it's too light for my face but my neck like it's fine with my neck. So it's like, what do you do, you know? Do I wanna like spread it down my neck and darken my neck or do I wanna like lighten my face? Like I really, it's a toss up, you know? The coverage of this foundation is good and I do find that it does last quite a while and I will say that this lasts like quite a bit better when it's not super hot out like every other foundation there is out there but um, it's not the most long wearing foundation I've ever tried I'll tell you that but I do really like it and it makes my skin look really nice and smooth and it's comfortable to wear so it might be my winter foundation there's no SPF in it um, and you should wear SPF in the winter anyway but I mean, it's, I live in Canada, in Nova Scotia, Canada, at that, so <laughs> it's a little cloudy here, you know? This, my skin like sucks this foundation in. It's super easy to blend in with your fingers. And then I just, any areas where I feel like I missed coverage or like wiped it off, because when you're applying with your hands, you can just like wipe it off too, so it's kind of weird, but anyway. Okay, and I'm using my, uh, my paper towel here, my paper towel guard to wipe my hand on. Because I don't have anything else. I also have tried a new concealer recently. Uh, you guys know that I'm always on the hunt for a concealer that's as good as MAC Pro Longwear. I don't know why I can't just be satisfied with the fact that I have a concealer that I really like, but I feel like that's an issue that's like not for a beauty video. Anyway, um, so this is the MAC 24 Hour Studio Fix. Okay, hold on. I said that wrong. This is the 24. This is the MAC Studio Fix 24 Hour Smooth Wear Concealer. When somebody described this to me at the store, they said it's like shape tape without being drying. So, I mean, that sounds pretty good. I have the color NW24. These run super light. Um, I like that it has a wand for personal use. As a makeup artist, I find like you don't want to take this and rub it on someone's face, you know, like I'm doing to mine, and then rub it on someone else's face. Like that's not really very sanitary. That being said, you could just wipe it on like your palette or whatever you use like for your foundations and you might save a little bit because when you're pumping out that Pro Longwear concealer you might not use it all but you can't like dip your brush in it put it on someone's face and then dip your brush in it again and put it on someone else's face like you can't do that so um, this might be better I don't know though but this works well on acne too like one thing I will say is that the um, the MAC Pro Longwear does not work well on acne this stuff does, it's like, 
clings right to it. Like I, this is probably the best concealer Mac has come out with in years. This is only my second day trying it too, and I need like I need like a good week or two of using something before I know if I'm gonna like it. You know, like that goes for everything, like clothes, makeup, hair stuff. So I'm gonna use my Laura Mercier powder to set all of that down. And also, when I was at Mac the other day, I got myself some Fix Plus. So that's exciting because I like that Pixie setting spray, but I don't like it as much as Fix Plus, you know? Fix Plus is just like where it's at for setting spray, if you ask me. So I'm gonna fill in my brows. I never film this part, but maybe since I haven't, and I think I deleted my eyebrow video, so I'm just gonna, I'll film this part, but I'll speed it up, and then let me know in the comments down below if you guys want like an eyebrow tutorial. I'm really not that good at eyebrows, I'll be totally honest, it's not. It's not my strong suit when it comes to doing my makeup. It's something that took me like so long to figure out and I still feel like I'm not that good at it and I've been doing makeup for a long time. I've been filling in my brows for years and years now and so I just feel like, you know, I could do it if you guys want me to. I'm not really selling it, am I? I'm not really selling my skill at the moment but it's just the area where I'm just like not that confident to be 100% honest. Anyway. I'm gonna fill them in. You can watch if you want to, or you can speed it up. when I'm editing the photo than they do in my mirror right here, but anyway, we'll move on. And I can take these off now because I got my foundation on and I didn't make a mess, so. Gotta take the wins where you can. I have hardly any of this left, uh, but I'm gonna prime my eyelids with Paint Truly Paint Pot. I did use this concealer as a primer yesterday and it, it worked pretty well. I didn't really, I didn't really measure its success as an eyeshadow primer yesterday when I wore it, but I didn't notice that it was awful either. Like, I feel like if it was really bad, I would have noticed, and I didn't. So, if you're thinking about buying that and you use your concealer as your primer, as your primer, you might like it. Give it a try. I recommend this. It's, and the thing about MAC is that it's really well priced now. Like, I feel like now that I, I don't work there and I don't buy as much MAC because I'm not working there. Um, I find that like I'll buy another brand like this foundation was $60 like that's a lot you know and then Mac Studio Fix which is one of my favorite foundations of all time I don't know why I'd never buy it um, is like 34 bucks or $35 35 or under so I mean that's like that's very reasonable you know and like I feel like all these other brands have come out and they're so expensive and Mac goes up like a dollar a year maybe every other year they'll put things up a dollar you know so it's like they're becoming more of like a medium priced brand. And so it's hard not to get behind that. I mean, there's no reason why I wouldn't want to get behind it. I used to work at MAC. They basically, you know, helped me establish my makeup skills and my career and stuff. But like, I just find it so interesting how like, MAC gets like no attention on YouTube, I feel. And maybe it's because they're not working with influencers that much. Maybe it's because, you know, they're dip I don't know why, but I feel like they don't get as much recognition as they deserve. And I, I feel like such a kiss ass for saying that because I used to work there, but it's like, I really truly believe that. Like I still think it's a great brand. I still think it's what they stand for is amazing. And I still think that their products are good. Like their products are, are you know, my kit is full of Mac. Like I don't buy anything else for my kit other than Mac because it's reliable, you know what I mean? Anyway. 
rant over. What am I gonna do for eyeshadow today? I have like no ideas. Oh goodness. I'm gonna grab the Morphe and Jaclyn Hill Dark Magic palette. So I'm gonna take this color right here. Shh. It's called Shh. And I'm taking that on a Morphe E28 brush. Um, these colors, by the way, are the only ones that I've used in this palette so far, so. I don't know, I mean the greens and stuff I love. I love wearing green. When I used to work at MAC, I wore green all the time, but it's not very everyday wearable. Like if I will roll into work with green eyeshadow on, they're probably like, what does it St. Patrick's say? You know what I mean? It's a hard color to wear every day. It's a hard color to wear. Let me know if you guys want a tutorial on how to use like this palette or like green eyeshadows, you know, for every day. Because I can try and figure it out. I mean, I know how to do it. It just takes more effort. Putting this color into my crease. Oh, you know what I gotta do first? I have to set my primer because I found that these eyeshadows blend in much better when you set your primer with like a translucent powder or a setting powder or even like a skin colored eyeshadow. I find that they, they work much, much easier. I find that they also last a lot longer on the lid, so if you have any of these Jaclyn Hill eyeshadows and you were finding that the creaminess was making them hard to blend, just put like a translucent powder underneath and should make it easier for you. Same thing on the other side. I'm also thinking about maybe getting like a background for my videos. Let me know what you guys think about that. Do you like my background? Because it's like very, it's just like a, the room that I film in. It's like my comfy chair that I read my books in and like my little mantra of like, don't count the days, make the days count, you know? Let me know what you guys think about that because I mean, you're the ones that are watching. It doesn't matter to me um, if I have a background or not. It might be kind of cool to like sometimes have one, sometimes not. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think, if I should have a background, if I should jazz this one up. Cause I feel like some, I'm just in the mood to like change things up, you know? Okay, taking this Arbonne brush, um, this one is the eyeshadow brush. It's really big, but I like it. I don't actually like Arbonne products in general. Sorry to anyone out there who sells it um, or who loves it, but I, it's just never really worked for me. One thing I do really love is this brush. Their brushes weren't bad. I mean, they did fall apart on me. Uh, I have two left but they, they did work well, and they're cruelty free, so if you're looking for some cruelty free brushes, give these ones a try. So I'm taking the color, I didn't even show you guys, I'm gonna take this color here, Diversion, on the upper right corner, and I'm gonna pack that all over my lid. I feel like a lot of my daytime looks are like matte color in the crease, shimmery color on the lid, mascara, and then go, because it's like easy, you know, especially like I gotta go to work soon. Like, I should be going to work anytime. Then I'm gonna take that first color on this tiny little brush and run that along my lower lash line. Next, I'm gonna take this Pixi Endless Silky Eye Pen, and I gotta pull my mirror a little closer. Hopefully you guys don't see it. Nope, okay. Um, this is in the color Black Cocoa, and I love this eye pencil. So I'm just gonna take that, notice how, okay, sometimes I find when people are going in with eye pencils, they go straight in like this and try to go back and forth. Go at it like holding the, the eye pencil below and like using it to go upward rather than like this because I find that this is really hard. Like yes, this is how you hold a pen, but if you think about it, you're holding the pen facing away from you. It's hard to do anything this way. It just feels awkward to me. And so I will like choke down on the pencil and then use your finger, your pinky finger, to steady your hand against your cheek and just go like back and forth very lightly. Like you don't have to press hard, especially with this. It's so pigmented, you don't have to press hard. So just take it like along the lash line from below. And then when you, if you open your eye, it's a lot easier to get on the inner part of your eye and just Still the same thing from below. And then if you turn your head like this, it's really easy to get like right down close because I find that that's one thing I notice when people use eyeliner. They don't go all the way to the 
ends of their eye line and then I find that it just looks like it's not really natural and it looks like makeup you know so that's one thing that you can do to make your makeup not look like makeup is make sure that you get it nice and tight to your lash line and make sure you get it to your inner corner and your outer corner if you're wearing eyeliner so same thing on the other side I always put my eyebrows up even though it does not help so save yourself the wrinkles and relax your brows And I find you can see better too, like when you turn your face, you can open your eye and you can see then because you have both eyes open, it's so much easier to see. You don't have like one open and one like twitchy, you know what I mean? Okay. And then when you're finished, just like give yourself a little like look side to side and like see if you got it nice and close all over. So next I want to add a little bit of this. I want to add a little bit of this to my lower lash line, so I'm going to take this brush. This is a Mikasa E100. Any angled brush will do. Take the angled brush and take it the pen from the pencil like this, and then go and stamp it underneath your lashes as tight as you can to your lash line. And remember, we already had that eyeshadow there, so this will really help to sort of like smoke it out. But if we find that we need to go and blend it in, we can use that little brush again. So. Make sure you get it nice and tight to the end on the bottom as well. You don't want to go all the way in to the inner corner on the bottom lash line just because, well I don't anyway, just because I find that it can close your eye and it takes that way that like swept up look, you know? But same thing starting on the outside and you're just like sort of stamping it and rubbing it and you can switch around the way you use the brush based on the angle of your eye. Some people may find it easier to use a brush like this that's straight across the top. Am I doing this right? Yeah. So some people might find this easier, but I personally really like an angled brush. Whatever works best for you. Um, those, Both of those brushes are super easy to find, so I wouldn't worry about where you're gonna find it. Mac sells them, you find them at Sephora, you find them online. I don't like when it's like super harsh for an eyeliner on the bottom. Um, so I am going to grab that little brush that we used again. Can you guys see this? Yeah. And then I'm going to take that shh color again. And I'm just going to blend that eyeshadow and eyeliner and just kind of smoke it out. You don't have to put eyeshadow on the brush to smoke it out too. You can just use the brush and smoke out the liner. But I just wanted to add a little bit more of that eyeshadow. So that's why I'm doing that. And we're done. I'm gonna curl my lashes with my lash curler. My, I just use a Revlon lash curler. In my opinion, a lash curler is a lash curler. Like you don't have to go out and get like the most expensive one. That's for sure. Um, they all do the same thing. Just make sure that you have one that's not gonna like break your lashes off. You know, like <clears throat> make sure you have one that has this nice like soft piece right in here. Um, I find that that makes it a lot more comfortable if you catch your eyelid as well, which is it, it might happen. So I'm going to take my Marc Jacobs Velvet Noir Mascara. I almost feel guilty every time I mention this because it's so expensive. And it does run throughout the day, let me tell you. Because my, uh, like lately, I don't know if it's because the wind is blowing. My, maybe my eyes are dry and they're starting to like water periodically. I don't know. But my mascara is running. But I don't care because it's such a nice mascara that I will, I'm fine with it like running and me having to like fix my makeup throughout the day. That doesn't bother me. But if you are somebody whose mascara runs and that really bothers you, then I wouldn't get this one. But of course, I will have everything linked for you guys down below if you do decide that you want to check any of these products out. Because I am so fair, especially with this nice pale foundation, I'm going to use my Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer. I've been like loving this bronzer lately. It's so easy to put on, it's nice and quick, especially if you have to go to work. I mean, obviously this is taking me longer than it normally would to do my makeup before work because I'm explaining everything to you guys, which is great. Um, but I find that this is a nice quick bronzer for on the go. So if you're somebody that like always wears bronzer every day but you're like, oh, I don't have time to put it on and blah, 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 this is a really good one because it's really not that powdery. It's like nice and creamy. And then I just go up the sides of the nose. I overdid it over here, so I'll have to fix that. Um, but rather than like carving up my nose like this, I just kind of like add shadow to the side of it and then that's fine for me. 
nothing will last on my nose anyway especially down around this end which is where I really need the slimming so what can you do if I was someone that never touched my face all day then it would probably last but I'm, I'm like constantly wiping my nose because I have such bad allergies so it's just one of those things I'm always touching up my makeup there then I'm gonna dump out a little bit more translucent powder not a lot just like a little bit and I'm gonna blend that in especially right here down my nose this is how you can fix your mistakes if you go overboard with the bronzer like I just choose to go way overboard and then I go back in and like almost adjust it with the powder it just works for me you guys will figure out what works for you but that's what I do um, and I think I want a little bit of blush today where like this is more of like a cool toned look I find that I really need blush when I wear like grayish tones around my eyes because it'll just make me look deadish so I'm gonna use copper tone blush by Mac which is like a super warm blush I use it all the time as you guys know, if you watch my videos, it's a good one. This one and Melba are probably my two favorites, but I have Melba in my kit. Then I'm gonna use Opal Highlighter by Becca. This little sample I got as like a rewards, you know how you can cash in your rewards points at the cash when you're paying. I got this one like over, I think it's like, it's gotta be like a year ago now. And I just kind of dusted on my brow bone too. Um, and it's like just, I just hit pan, so. Like, that's pretty amazing. So I'm gonna mix two colors. The first one is Runway Hit by MAC. Way too coral for this look. So I'm gonna numb it with Blankety, which is also by MAC, and like, kinda grayish. There. Nice, like, light nude color. I don't feel like wearing anything, like, dramatic on my lips right now. I feel like I need a little definition there though, so I'm gonna grab this, this pathetic looking eyeliner. This is a Buxom Plump Line Lip Liner. This is the color Hush Hush, I think. Yeah, and I'm just gonna define my lips a little. There, that's better, because I kind of have like very faint lips. <laughs> I need a little darker. I need a little bit of like darker definition, if that makes sense, but that worked perfect. Okay, so that's it, that's it. I'm gonna spray myself with some Fix Plus. I don't know why I just shook it up. Oh God, that smells good. I missed you. Oh, I forgot to put brow gel on. I'm just gonna be using, this is the MAC Pro Longwear Brow Gel. Um, and emphatically blonde is the color I use. This also makes my brows look thicker, like you guys saw my brows before, like I don't have any. And so this kind of helps them, it look like they're not just drawn on, like there's hair there too. This is my makeup look today. Um, I'm going to show you guys my outfit as well. I wear a coat all day, so it's actually like kind of underwhelming my outfits every day because you can't really see them. So I'm just gonna show you like what I wear on like a crisp fall day when I wanna feel like dressed up and I wanna like just feel put together, so. This is my outfit for today. I'll go close so you guys can't see the mess in the back of the mirror right now. It's actually not that bad, but it looks really bad, like, it, has, it is that bad. Anyway, so this coat is like my fall coat that I wear. I got this at the Bay. I love this coat. I love that it's got pockets, and I always need pockets because I keep, like, pens and, like, my phone and stuff like that, and my pants don't often have pockets because I often wear tights. So. Onto that, these tights are from Dynamite. I've talked about these before. They're the kind that have like the elastics on the side and mine have strings hanging off of them because I wear them so often. Um, but they have like a nice seam coming down the leg and I just find that they, they're tights and they're comfy because they're elastic, but they look, because of the seam going down the middle and like they have like a nice seam coming along the thigh right here, I find that they look Oh, just a little I find that they look just like a little bit dressier than like crappy tight and then these shoes these are from style and co I got these at the bay last year I think I did include these in another I think I've probably included all of this stuff in a video before but sometimes it's just like helpful to see it on someone and then this top is one of those like peplum tops I've know I've talked about this top before I wear it all the time this is from Zara 
Peplum tops are everywhere right now, so if you're looking for one, they're super easy to find. I don't think that you would have any trouble finding one, but I will try and link something similar or another option for you guys down below. I'm not sure if Zara has this again. It was in there the other day and I didn't see it, so. I will try and link similar things. I know Dynamite is selling these tights again because I saw them the other day and the Bay often will sell things over and over again. So here's just like a pan of my outfit. And then I'll probably most likely have this done up and I'll maybe wear a scarf depending on how cold it is out. So it would just be like cinched there at the waist and then ready to go. Nothing exciting at all but I find that if you wear like all black and then you throw like a little bit of like this camel color in, it just looks so chic. Like I just find that nothing is more chic in my opinion than like black pants, black boots, and a camel coat. It's so simple and it's so easy. And when your clothes are black, no one's really looking at the details of your clothes. Whenever I wear all black, I feel super chic, I feel super put together, and I don't have to worry about things matching. So unless you have something that's like super faded and something that's still like brand new, that's the only time that I ever find matching black is difficult. But anyway, I love these boots too. They're super comfortable. They're almost like kind of squishy on the bottom, so they're easy because I'm on my feet quite often at work. Um, and they're not like... They're not too loud, like they're definitely not quiet, so you have that like power sound walk. But I like being tall, like I feel like where I'm so short, I like to sort of like add a little bit of height because then I'm like closer to looking people in the eye and I just feel like, for some reason I just feel like it helps, I don't know. Like people are not so much like looking down at me and I don't seem like so much so young when I'm wearing heels, if that makes sense. Anyway, so I think that you guys pretty much get the idea. Um, I'm gonna be, whenever I do these get ready for work videos with me, I am gonna be showing like my makeup and my outfit. Um, my hair is pretty much the same every day, but if you guys do wanna know how I do my hair, let me know in the comments down below. I hope that you guys have an amazing day. Thank you so, so, so much for tuning in. Let me know what you guys wanna see in the comments down below. I'll have everything linked down below. Make sure you check out my blog. I haven't had a whole lot of time to update it lately, but I have some good ideas coming for that as well. So please let me know in the comments down below again what you would like to see next. Make sure you subscribe before you leave and I'll see you in my next video.